Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. We are honored to have some very special guests today from Boston. We have Dr. Charles Jacobs. You may know him as the founder uh, of a very famous organization fighting against anti-Semitism on the East Coast, Americans for Peace and Tolerance. Uh, welcome, Dr. Jacobs. Well, thank you for having me. Oh, it's such a pleasure and an honor to have you today. And I understand you have brought along a special guest. Yes, um, we're very lucky to have with us uh, a man who just wrote a book on the topic that we're about to discuss. His name is Ilya Feoktistov, and he is the executive director of my organization, Americans for Peace and Tolerance. Welcome to both you gentlemen. Thanks for joining us on ATP Report today. From a political science point of view, I go back to the writings of Jefferson where his diaries are still available to look at. And he talked about the incompatibility of the new American constitution and its bill of rights with, as he called them then, they called themselves this, the Mohammedans, the Muslims. Because he said those people needed to make a choice. Either they were gonna grant rights per the Bill of Rights and the new Constitution, or they were going to follow the Quran, because the two books were not compatible. As you just pointed out, Ilya, Americans think gay rights ought to be universal. Women's rights ought to be universal. Equality among the sexes ought to be for everyone. Slavery is an abomination. All of these things, there's an 180 degree different viewpoint coming out of Sharia. Jefferson pointed out in the 18th century, and it seems we have forgotten the words of our founding father. Fascinating yeah. story about Jefferson. Um, you know, he was uh, doing this in the context of fighting the Barbary pirates, and he and his consul came to them, I think in London, and said, look guys, uh, can we parley? Can we do, you know, can we get along? Maybe come to accommodation? as part of international law, a very liberal ideal. And the reply was no, because our book tells us that we must fight you and take your uh, property. And uh, he was shocked by that. And as a result, you know, he, he just couldn't comprehend it. He grew up in a completely Western world um, with, with its own terrible problems. But uh, with an understanding of at least some international law. And what he saw was, uh, was a, like you said, a complete 180. Well, that led to the Barbary Pirates Wars, and it's recounted in the Marine Hymn. We oh, sent yeah. the Navy to Tripoli and beat them in Libya. And that ended the slave trade as far as grabbing American ships and selling the sailors. Um, obviously his words are not around anymore in the common vernacular. It takes someone with a historical perspective to remind the Elizabeth Warrens of the world, they have a different standard. And when you go there to this mosque, among other places, and endorse them by your presence, what you're really saying is American values are checked at the door. You guys get to do whatever you want. I mean, that's pretty much what is being said, yeah? Yes, that's true. Um, and in fact, if you were to insist that American values be the things, the principles that guide American citizens and American conduct, that you would be accused of, uh, uh, of being a, a Western uh, fanatic, you know, a, a Western dominator, a Western supremacist, uh, someone who doesn't appreciate the fact that don't you understand, Barry, that all cultures are, are, are morally e equivalent? How, how dare you? Uh, so, I mean, this is, I mean, the anthropology departments of every American college have, have quit thinking that when you go into uh, some primitive tribe, and you can't even use the word primitive, and if you were to find that some of them eat the other ones, uh, you, you shouldn't report that. Or if you do, you, you should let it off as, uh, well, wait, people are different. Uh, sadly, Charles, I, pathetically, you're right, and I don't know what to do about it. How, how are the people in Boston responding? 
Well, um, th I think a major part of the book, which is the saddest part, look, we can't determine what our external enemies are going to do. They're going to do what they're going to do. They're going to uh, come in and, and infiltrate the West and build mosques as, as long. But what you'd think we do have control over is the Western, the response of Western civic leaders. Okay. Well, this is the saddest part of the book. And it's in a, in a way the most frightening because all of the Western civic leaders and religious leaders in Boston did not want to know the truth. We sat with the Boston Globe spotlight team, the same ones who were who bravely, you know, I think was bravely um, outed the, the 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 pedophile priests in Boston, in Catholic Boston. That was very great, you know, truth to power in all of that. We sat with them for an hour, and Ilya went through his PowerPoint, showing them here's checks written to this mosque from known terrorist organizations and people. Here are checks written by this mosque to known terrorist organization and people. Here is what they teach in the mosque, that Jews are the sons of monkeys and pigs, that you can, they had on the mosque website, until we pointed it out, how to beat your wife, okay? We laid all of this out, and we, sh we showed them that it was Saudi funded, and the Saudis do not build moderate mosques. We, we laid it all out to them. It made no difference. They shut up. And, as, and then when the mosque people, who were very, very smart, went to the left-leading leadership of the churches and the Jewish community and got them all to embrace them as moderates and to have dialogue, um, they were in. They were in. The, and the worst part was, in, in my view, and I think Ilya might agree, was the Jewish community. Because once the Jewish community gave them a, a kosher stamp, then the rest of Boston could say to itself quite rationally, well, the Jews have the most skin in the game here. And if they're telling us that these guys are okay, they must be okay. Well, they weren't okay. And the Jewish leaders were cowards. They ran. They didn't want to think the thoughts, that uh, rational thoughts about it. And that, to me, is the most frightening. Ilya, tell people where they can find your book. I think this is important. The book is available on Amazon, Terror in the Cradle of Liberty is its name. And you can also find it uh, through our website, peaceandtolerance.org, uh, which also includes many articles on this and many other topics of interest to the viewers. Thank you for that, and I encourage ATP viewers to go out and get it. Charles, how can people find out more about what you're doing? From our website, uh, Americans for Peace and Tolerance website, which is peaceandandtolerance.org, as Ilya said. I also have a site about um, the enslavement of blacks currently around uh, in, in, in Africa by mostly by Muslims and, and, and Arabs. It's called I Abolish, the letter I Abolish.org. Um, and they can, they can find out everything that I'm doing through those two sites, pretty much. Great. I encourage all of our viewers to check out Ilya's book and check out uh, the foundation in Boston. This is stuff we need to know about. I want to thank you both for the work you're doing. You're brave gentlemen in the face of tolerance that is truly pacifism. and. Um, Generally, what happens to people like that is they get run over and later generations lament, why didn't we do something when we knew what was going on? Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. Thanks for joining us today on ATP Report. Uh, remember, you can always go to our, our text message service and get reports like this one for free on your phone. Simply text the message TRUTH. To 88202 and you'll be subscribed to our text message service you'll always get everything for free we don't charge for content and you'll get it every couple of days right on your cell phone for ATP report I'm Barry Newsbomb.